for those who weren't here last week, we asked critical questions about evangelism based on what we know in Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19, where Jesus commissions his followers and tells them to go into the world and preach the gospel, teaching people to obey, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we ask the question, whose responsibility is it to do that? Two millennia later, we are here at Nairobi Chapel, Langata, and there are empty seats around us. We ask the question, why are those seats empty? Or a more fair question, whose responsibility is it to get these seats filled? Or is the church defined by its capacity to fill the seats that they should be occupied? Or is there another metric that we need to use? And we went to John chapter 4 and I want us to read it again and begin to understand why it is important that we are continually sharing our faith that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Why this is important to each one of us who believe. John telling the story of Jesus in Samaria. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples. This is John chapter 4 verse 1. And then, although in fact it was not Jesus who... Let me repeat that. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sikar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from a journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour, that meaning it was around almost now. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me water to drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy some food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews and Samaritans. So, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew, you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have been, he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty, but whoever drinks the water I will give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give will become in them a, a spring of living water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, see you give me this water so that I, I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here and drawing water. He told her, Go call your husband. And come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that that place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation comes from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah 
called the Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain this everything rather to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak am he. Let's skip to verse 40, 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him. Yes, believed in him um, because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did, she said to the crowd. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed two more days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Verse 42. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. So we covered this context of this incident last week of what happened at Jacob's well in Sikar in Samaria. We talked about the significance of Jacob's well, its history, and the implications of Jesus being in Samaria and telling this woman about the gospel, but not just about that revealing his deity. This was one of the first people he told that he is the Messiah. In fact, that is the entire agenda of the book of John. John was trying to be able, in the gospel, to say that Jesus is the Messiah. Matthew started with saying, he is the new Moses, the king. In Mark, the, 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 uh, uh, sorry, in Matthew, the audience was mainly Jewish readership. In the book of Mark, it was a Gentile audience. And Mark was telling them that Jesus suffered. He was a suffering servant. In the book of Luke, Luke was telling um, a, 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 an aristocrat Roman called Theophilus, that Jesus was not only God, but he was also man. And here, in the book of John, Jesus is the Lord. He is the Messiah. That is the agenda of the entire book of John. And Jesus revealed himself. John picks out this. Jesus didn't do that a lot to many, but he revealed it to this woman. She was an the most obscure of people in that Samaritan town because of her gender, her status, her past. Christ, the living word, was made known to her. And then lastly, we began to attempt and say, why don't we have this passion of sharing the gospel, the truth that Jesus is the Messiah? I pointed out about five of them. I never got feedback, but I also got other feedback. You know when the sermon, okay, imewa chapa after the service. Very few people say hi to the pastor. You guys walked away very quickly because we did a test. We did a test, okay? For those of who are here, we said 60 seconds. Share the gospel to the person sitting next to you. But five reasons. Why, why sharing the gospel uh, and telling the gospel to others is not something that we do. I said, number one, we think it's for the experts. And so we have outsourced it to the professionals, the pastor, yet we can do it. Number two is we live in a bubble. Many of us do not interact or never choose to interact or share the love of God with others who are not Christians, with people who are not believers. In fact, this bubble is so small, it, 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 it is a subculture where we begin to have our own language, our own um, uh, terms and terminologies. Sometimes even being almost hostile to those who don't believe the same things that we believe. Number three, we are impatient. We do not appreciate that conversion, belief, is a process. All right? Maybe one day I'll begin to explain these things. There, there, there are processes of becoming like Christ. We are saved, guys. We are saved from the penalty of sin. So when we believe and choose to believe in Jesus Christ, we are saved from the penalty of sin. Sasa. All right? 
So when you make that declaration, when you choose to believe that Jesus is the Christ, one thing, one thing happens. You are forgiven for there is no condemnation of those who are in Christ. Okay? So if you choose to believe in Jesus Christ, something immediately happens. You are saved from the penalty of sin. What's the penalty of sin? Death. Separation from God. Sasa. And you receive the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Stage number two. You're being saved. Okay? Here you have been saved. Now here, you're being saved from the power of sin. So, each and every day, all right? Each and every day you are changing. You're transforming to be more like Christ. It doesn't happen overnight. You begin understanding more and more. You begin reading your Bible more and more. And scripture begins. You start having those aha moments. Things start changing. Habits change. Practices change. Uh, mindsets shift. And these things transform you into the likeness of Christ. So we meet you today when you make your decision saved from the power of uh, from the penalty of sin, and meet you a few years later, people say, Aki go ume, ume change. And what we are hoping they're saying is, they're seeing more of Christ in you. Now you're being saved from the power of sin. One day, we'll be saved from the presence of sin. One day, that is when Jesus Christ comes in all his glory and takes us and we will be translated into a new being, a new body where there will be no more crying, no more stress, no more Monday mornings that you have to go to work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No more school fees. No more stress. Yani, you will be in the presence of the Lord and he will make you his dwelling. We read this in Revelation chapter 21. Uh, chapter 21 and chapter 22. That is what is going to happen. You'll be released from the presence of sin one day. And we look forward to that, that day. Are we together? <laughs> that is what they call systematic theology. Hmm. Interesting. So that process takes time. But we are impatient. In fact, we dismiss when people do not respond to this truth of the gospel, we dismiss them. We say, that one is a hard head. They will never come to know. We don't know what the Holy Spirit is doing in their lives. What we should be doing is continuing extending a hand of fellowship and love to them. I'll be coming to that shortly. The fourth reason why we do not share our faith is the cost. We have not been taught that God, rather you have been taught that God is all about you. Your personal well-being, your good health, material blessings, favor, and prosperity. I am persuaded that we do not teach about the real cost of following Jesus Christ. Because for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That is what Philippians 1.21 says. It's a big deal, guy. This faith journey with Christ is actually not a, an easy sell. It can cost you serious reputational damage. Mm. And that is why I think that we do not go this route. We don't share the gospel. Because I'm not sure we have owned this. I must say we do not confront here from the pulpit with this reality again and again that following Christ does cost. If anyone would want to come after me, Jesus said, they must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Luke 9, 20. Lastly, another reason why we don't share our faith is we don't know that we don't know. So last week, we had a speed test, an elevator pitch to the person seated next to us and said, share the gospel in the very best way you can. And if we were to grade one another and tell one another, were you told how much you are graded? Did you, were you guys told how much you are graded? You ask the person if you remember them. But it was an average grade for much, most of us. And I don't blame you. It's because we don't teach this much. We don't teach this enough. And that has been the failure of we in the church. 
And so it is my commitment as your pastor to continue bringing these truths of the gospel again and again and again to you so that you will learn how to share what you truly believe in. And John, the writer of this story, tells this story and hopefully we the readers can learn and decipher a few things on how to share the story that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So if you go to scripture, talking about Jesus to others is not just a one-time thing, uh, but it's also a continuous thing. But here we see Jesus give us a model of how it can be done. So let's, let's look at what, what, is, what, we are, what, we are, what we are seeing here. So we all have a story. Sindio. We all have a story. I just told you a story about my shags. Some of you want to go to that shags. You want to see. Is this true? Eh? Is this true? Simply because of the stories I've told you. Is Pastor Gowi telling us the truth about these shags? At what 400 species of birds? First of all, I'm not sure if you guys of Nairobi notice birds. There are just too many buildings around. There's not, not enough branches for birds to, to perch. But I have been telling you a story about my rural area. It's a story. You all have a story. In fact, most of us, if you just look at your knees, they are scars. Sindio. Sindio. I'm a, you guys didn't run and fall down. If you just look at your knees, they are scars. And you can begin to say, ah, when did I get this scar? Okay? There's a story about that scar. Sindio, I was playing here, and then I fell down over here, or this and that. I was, I was on my phone like this, and sometimes in Nairobi, those manholes are not covered. I found myself in it. You know? I'm talking about a friend, not me necessarily. But um, uh, that's a dangerous thing. But in other words, we all have a story. So it is with this story in the book of John chapter 4, I want us to learn like the African three-legged stool or the three stones where we, 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 one builds a fire to cook. Here there are three stories at play that we can learn. The story of the Samaritan woman, Jesus' story, and the redemptive story. Let me quickly do this and then we are, we are out of here. The first story that I observe here is the, the, the Samaritan woman's story. First, Jesus appreciates and validates her reality. And he does this one. He finds a woman alone at Jacob's well. He's tired and starts a conversation about him being thirsty. In fact, I wonder if he really got water to drink there. Maybe he just wanted a sip. But he started to, and he noticed that this lady was alone and she was fetching water at midday. This was a practice that was done probably early in the day and she didn't do it alone. It wasn't done alone. So there was something wrong with this situation. And he strikes a conversation with her. And the first story he says is that, look, this conversation is here. She is saying, how can a man speak to a woman in public, number one, and two, a Jew speak to a Samaritan. So Jesus engages her at that level. Her reality as a woman in biblical Palestine times placed her at the periphery. First as a woman, then secondly as a Samaritan at the periphery. And then thirdly, we get to know later in the story that this woman truly had a questionable past. And Jesus navigates around that place. This woman is definitely in a low position. And then he insightfully characterizes her life. Talks about the issues of her life. And wait for it guys. Does not condemn her. He doesn't condemn her. In fact... He goes on to engage her in more conversation, validating her story, and then tells her, I am the Messiah. You see, guys, it is important that we recognize that as we engage others who do not know this faith, 
that they too have a story that we need to empathize with. That we need to embrace. That we need to accept. That we cannot be in a place as a church of judging others. So if somebody comes to church and is not dressed appropriately, you don't know their journey. And who made the rules? <laughs> who made the rules of how you should dress? We don't know where that person is. We don't know where the relationship with God is. Maybe they have never been taught. Maybe they have not yet understood or appreciated. Or you see somebody talking to someone and it's like, man, you talk dirty. It's like, hey, okay, this is the way I've known I've been talking. So we as believers, tunaweka vikwazo mingi sana. Yet we do not know the history of how that person has got here. The least we could do is emulate what Jesus did. And that was to validate their story and saying, I hear you and I don't condemn you. We are a subtotal of our choices. And we who are believers, hey, hey, hey. If, if I had, yes, a video camera, hidden camera following your life for the next one month, and then we would display it here on the screen. I bet you the unbeliever will be like, yep, that's me. Yep, yep, that's me. But us as believers would leave Nairobi Chapel Langata and go to another church. Because we all have our issues. And these issues are our stories. So it is important, like we see what Jesus did, is he validated her story by listening to her and not condemning her. Number two, the second story. I said there were three stories. As somebody who brings in the message of this news of Jesus Christ, you must believe in what you're pitching. You must believe in this story. And the best way to believe this story and to make this story is to make connections between what Jesus Christ was doing in your life as the same thing with what is happening in the other person's life. And let me explain to you. Jesus began to make his case by making connections between her story and his story. Where do we connect with you? Maybe you can start asking, borrow this phrase from me. How does this help cocoa production in Ghana? Why are we in this room? Why have we connected? Those are the questions you should be asking. Why am I in this company? Why are these my colleagues? What, God, what is it, God, that you have chosen for this time that I am going to be amongst these people at my workspace or in school? Why, Lord, did you put me into this family? Start looking for those connections because they're important. Not to embarrass one of us here, uh, Amos yesterday had a, 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 an engagement with men. We were almost a hundred men meeting and just having fun. These men did not, few of us knew one another. At least those of us from here in CLA to, to Lijuana. But majority of us didn't know one another. We knew one another from online. Because we follow Amos on his online platform. And I had the opportunity of drawing connections with different people. And Amos, you mess it up when you told people, I am the pastor. But there were so many connections I was making with these different men at different types of life. I took two numbers of two different men because I found that there was a connection. Hopefully, one day, if the Lord gives me an opportunity... I will tell them about who Jesus Christ is. But that was not important. What was important is we made connections with these men. This is what Jesus is. And Jesus shows a deeper, deeper longing of a shared story between hers and his. Because he was Jewish, she was Samaritan. And he says in verse 23, we have a shared history, verse 23. Yet a time is coming and has come when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. 
God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus is telling his story. And so what I'm ex- asking you to do is become your story. Don't be afraid of your story. Share your story with the other person. And seek to have connections. Human connections. That is important. This is where the last story becomes the super story. I call it the meta story. People do not buy a product or a service or an idea, guys. People buy the experience that you have. It was, I think, Maya Angelou who said this. You do not remember what people have done, but you surely remember how they made you feel. So it is the experience that is important. This is what I call the meta story. It is the gospel story. It tells the story of what Christ has done for all of us. That is the big story. That is the 60 second story that I was asking you to say. It doesn't work in a vacuum. It is where you connect that story with our stories. God has been pursuing mankind. To restore this relationship. And God has used his son. Jesus the Christ. To mediate this. For there is one God. And one mediator. Between God and man. This is the man Jesus Christ. Who gave his life as a ransom for us all. So you ask me go. So what? Now we've heard about this. The actual engaging of others with the truth of the gospel is about integrating these three stories. And that is what I'm calling you to do. That is why these seats are still empty. Excuse me. These seats are empty simply because we have not integrated these three stories. We have not understood their story or or sought to validate other people's story. Find out who they are and appreciate their why. For some, it will happen immediately. But I want to tell you, for most, it is going to take time. Days, weeks, months, even years for people to come to that point where they truly can say Jesus is indeed the Christ. Acknowledge people's reality. Acknowledge because it is important to them. And when you acknowledge their reality, acknowledge their worldview, recognize where this is, this is where you begin to extend love to them. The biggest currency of sharing the gospel Is not what you say. It's how you love them. Extend genuine love to them. Integrate that with your own story. You are the best person to tell your own story. Do not be ashamed of your story. Because that's who you are. You are a sum total. And guys, I say this to you parents. Hey, hey. hey. I remember when my parents were... uh, my, My dad and his friend... Actually, it was a, a cousin of his. They would come very tipsy. Okay? <laughs> I remember this. And, uh, and they'd come to the, the house. My dad would be dropped. And uh, my uncle, he worked in government at that time. He said, hey, Goey, how are you? Uh, fine. Yeah. How are you doing in school? I said, I'm doing okay. You know, in my days, I used to be number one. And my dad would laugh. <laughs> And this saying, mother tongue is like, you are lying. He's like two drunk guys. You are lying. No, I'm not. Who was number one? And they start talking about who number one was. One thing I will never tell my children is I was number one. I will not. Because I was never number one. I was in number one. In fact, the only time I was number one, I was even surprised, was in, in Kole. When they were giving, you know, graduation, you know, uh, and then they declare the highest grade in economics is, you know, when they call your name, yes, highest grade in economics, I was like, ah, yeah, me, 
Me? Ha! Hey! Wow! He's, he's talking about me. I didn't know. And it's not that I was an A plus student. Economics is it's a hard subject to study. Anyway, but that's your story. So, parents, be real with your children. Be real. When you're talking about sex, be real. If your spouse was not the first, tell your children. Don't hide from it. And tell them why that happened. Tell them the truth. That is your story. And tell them who you have become. And tell them what Jesus is doing in your life. This is the the most powerful story you can ever tell somebody is your story. Who Jesus is becoming for you. Share with them your struggles. And tell them, see Jafika, because that's what we think we do. When we go to share about Jesus, you want to be with my figure. And when somebody asks you, okay, where, where, did, where did Cain get his wife? Do you know the best way you can say Peru to that answer? Do you know the best answer? I don't know. Because you don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. And say, I'll get back to you. That is a difficult question. Watch at the end and find your research. Because we're all in a journey. As I close, a filmmaker friend of mine, me and her have a conversation. And we have this conversation about, and this debate about movies. <coughs> She's a filmmaker. <coughs> and we've, we've, we've said, the Europeans make better movies than the North Americans. Because the Europeans make cinema for the art. And we say the Oscars is not necessarily a good representation of good movies. Just go to Cannes Film Festival. That's where you'll find the art of, of, of making movies. But the US, Canada, and even Mexico, because those are the ones who make big movies, they are good at telling stories about the stories. In fact, they are good and excellent about marketing. That's why they make more money than the Europeans. I was like, yeah, you're right. Because, hey, Mazay, you watch one of these Hollywood movies, you're like, I want to go watch it. Then when you go watch it, it was a waste of your money. Nowadays we stream, I'm like, that was a waste of 90 minutes. Anyone guys watch Black Panther? Anyone watch Black Panther already? Should, 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 should I go and watch it or not? I should, eh? I should, eh? I just wait for it and I stream, eh? Kini Wakanda forever. But you understand what I'm talking about, guys. Just the best person to tell your story is you. I don't know, as a weka chumvi hapo kidogo. But you can tell that story. And lastly, God's story. God's story is that he made him who had no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. That is the awesome story for all of us. And this is where you can place both their story and your story and say, so where are we in this? Start telling people about Christ. Because if he is your Lord and your hope, then maybe Christ can be the same for that individual who doesn't believe. Father God, thank you for your truth, which is living and active in your word. Yes, sharper than any double edged sword, piercing through bone, marrow. Dividing joint from spirit. Judging the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. I pray that Father God, your word which has been spoken today. Would encourage. Scratch that Lord. Would compel us. To tell. Our own story. 
of who you have been to us. And even if you have, we have walked this journey for three, four, five months with you, it's okay. That even if we have not had a good relationship with you over the years, it's okay. This is part and parcel of the journey. But it is important that the world would know that Jesus is Lord. And that Father God, your love is expressed on the cross at Calvary. That if anyone would believe in Jesus Christ, they will have eternal life. This is the message of the gospel and I pray that Lord God, we would respond to this. For the harvest is plentiful, you say, but the laborers are few. And I pray you, the Lord of the harvest, would raise many more from here. But yet, Father God, I will not take for granted that there could be people among us today that do not know that their story can be in line with you. But their story is important to you. And that Father God, they can integrate, they can merge their stories into this bigger, meta story of eternal life in Jesus Christ. So with our eyes closed and our heads bowed, I want to give an opportunity to you who may be here, you who are following us online, if you have never made a decision to follow Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus, this could be that opportunity. Pray this prayer. Oh God, I am beginning to appreciate this story through your son, Jesus Christ. That he is indeed the Messiah. So I accept his lordship, Jesus, in my life today. And I confess I am a sinner in need of your love and grace. I choose now to believe that Jesus is the Christ, crucified, died, and risen. And now reigning in my life. Fill me with your spirit. And lead me in this new journey. And Father, for those who have prayed this prayer by faith, you say in your word that Lord God, they are no longer the same. They are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. This is the beginning of a journey, a transformation to become like your son. And I pray the grace of Jesus to be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please reach out to us. And for those of you, just DM us and somebody uh, will get in touch. Course of the week. By faith. I believe that this word is true and the Lord will continue to give you courage to speak the truth of Jesus Christ.